Welcome to the world of light wave and lasers. I'm Suzanne Nagel, one of the many scientists at AT&T Bell Laboratories who have helped develop light wave communication systems. Some smoke reveals the laser beam. Light wave systems transmit information on such beams of laser light through thin fibers of glass like these. The system offers a new and economical way to transport voice, video, and data across cities and countries and between continents. I remember as a young girl sending Morse code signals with a flashlight to a friend across the street. Light wave systems also rely on light beams to send information. But now lasers, or light emitting diodes, generate the pulses of light, which carry signals along hair thin fibers of glass. As the narrow beams of light from the laser travel through the glass fibers, equipment along the route detects and amplifies the light signals to assure reliable communications. At the receiving end, devices convert the light signals to electric signals containing the same information. The electric signals are then changed back into the original form, voice, video, or computer data, and delivered to the receiver. A laser is an electronic device that stimulates atoms to release energy in the form of a strong, narrow beam of light. When atoms within the laser are activated by a small amount of electricity, the electrons move up to higher orbits of energy. Almost immediately, though, the electrons fall back down to their original energy level. In falling back, the electrons emit a photon, a small bundle of energy in the form of light. These photons move through the cavity and bump into other atoms, stimulating those atoms to also emit photons. But how do these photons, these small amounts of light, become a powerful beam? The answer is provided by Charles Townes, who received the Nobel Prize for work related to the laser in 1958, when he was a consultant to Bell Laboratory. We put those atoms between two mirrors, the light goes back and forth many times, and by going back and forth many times, not only does it easily rob all of the atoms of their energy, but it comes out at a very, very pure frequency if some of the light leaks on through this mirror. The photons come out of the laser in a straight line, producing the narrow, intense beam of light. It's important to realize that lasers come in many sizes. Industry uses lasers as big as desks. But the lasers used in light wave systems are so small that one can fit easily into the eye of a needle. Science fiction writers conceived of lasers as devices of destruction. Since scientists Arthur Shallow and Charles Townes, working at Bell Labs, conceived the laser in 1958, Many types have been developed for varied uses. Hey, some years ago, Charles Townes and I wrote a book together on microwave spectroscopy. However, this uh, particular copy uh, has something else, one of our old inventions, the laser inside it. And we can use it to provide a beam of light for pointer when we want to show slides or whatever we want to aim at something. It gives us this red beam. Today, of course, lasers are being used for many things for uh, cutting very hard and very soft materials, such as uh, diamonds for wire drawing dyes and uh, uh, soft materials like, like cloth. One of the earliest applications was for surgery on the eye. They might be most commonly seen, however, in stores to uh, read the barcodes. Pictures on a, a video disc are inscribed with a small laser and read with an even smaller one. Uh, for telecommunications, we can use tiny lasers like this one, smaller than a grain of salt, to transmit voice, data, or television pictures over glass fibers, which are themselves no bigger than a human hair. These laser-based light wave systems carry more information more economically than other transmission systems. As a result, 
The number of lasers and light wave systems is expected to expand rapidly in the next few years. New experimental lasers produce faster and purer light pulses that travel longer distances without the need for regeneration. One new Bell Labs device, called the C3 laser, has sent a light signal for 100 miles without amplification along the route. The C3 laser can produce a billion light pulses per second and can switch from one pure wavelength of light to another in less than one billionth of a second. As a result, more signals can be sent over longer distances. Another device, the femtosecond laser, has produced the shortest pulses ever recorded. Scientists will use the femtosecond laser to study the incredibly fast reactions that take place in microelectronic chips. Every new idea in light wave systems from AT&T offers the potential for more economical, more reliable telecommunications in the future. The ultra-thin glass fibers used in light wave systems started as glass rods like this. In the AT&T manufacturing process, the glass is treated with special chemicals so it can carry light efficiently. The rods are heated, then pulled like taffy into hair-thin fibers. The fibers are put into ribbons 12 across, and the ribbons bundled into cables only one half inch in diameter. It would take at least nine large copper cables like this to handle the same number of calls as this small cable of glass fibers. That's why light wave is the wave of the future in telecommunications. Why are cables with glass fiber better than conventional copper wire? Glass fibers have a number of important advantages. More light pulses can be sent over glass fibers than electrical impulses over copper wire. This means that a light guide can handle more information than copper wire. And a light signal can travel further than an electric signal before requiring regeneration. As a result, light wave systems need less electronics. Light guide cable is also thinner than an equivalent wire cable. This allows the light guide to be snaked into already crowded underground ductwork, saving installation costs. Because glass fibers carry light from lasers and light-emitting diodes, the signals are virtually immune to problems, such as crosstalk and static from electrical interference. These benefits are the major reasons why AT&T and the nation's telephone companies are installing thousands of miles of light wave capacity this year. Most optical fiber used in telecommunications today is a type called multimode. Multimode fiber permits light from the laser to enter at a variety of angles, providing numerous pathways or modes within the fiber. These multi-modes tend to limit the distance light can be transmitted before regeneration of pulses is needed. A new fiber light guide, one-tenth the thickness of a human hair, has a narrow light acceptance angle, permitting only one straight, pure light beam. This single-mode fiber can carry much more information than multi-mode fibers. This could mean more economical transmission over longer distances.